Dear students, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjaleyamal Mahalanyam Engineering College, Koyal Bindi. I am happy to meet you again through the video lecture series on the subject Engineering Thermodynamics. So this is module 1. The topic is bas Basics of Thermodynamics and Zeroth Law. So this is lecture number 1 or 2. So module 1. First module, second lecture. We recap from the previous lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we introduced, we defined what is thermodynamics and we discussed the macroscopic and microscopic approach in thermodynamics. And we have seen few applications of thermodynamics, the various devices, engineering devices, our home appliances in we are using in our day to day life. They are applications of thermodynamics and we introduce the concept of continuum uh, which means the substance is continuous without any break or discontinuity so that is the basic concept applicable for macroscopic methodology and uh, in the uh, thermodynamics what we are discussing is only macroscopic approach and this is called as classical thermodynamics and we introduce the units and dimensions, the basic units, primary units and secondary units and the uh, basic uh, quantities and derived quantities, everything we discussed in the previous lecture. And in this lecture, we are going to enter into the uh, thermodynamics. So we are going to define thermodynamic system, types of the system. We define the boundary, surrounding, universe, control volume and control surface. We define thermodynamic properties, processes, cycles, and thermodynamic equilibrium and quasi static process. And the learning outcome for this lecture. So, at the end of the lecture, the student will be able to define and distinguish thermodynamic systems. Uh, the student will be able to recognize the boundary surrounding and the universe. They will be able to define the control volume and control surface. The student will be able to explain thermodynamic equilibrium. And uh, the student will be able to explain the quasi static approach, quasi static process. Thermodynamic system. Thermodynamic system is defined as quantity of matter or region of space, region in the space upon which attention is concentrated to analyze the problem. So, in the previous lecture, I have, I have shown many home appliances, many engineering devices like turbine compressor and refrigerator, everything. So, everything is considered as a thermodynamic system. So, a system is defined as a quantity of matter or region of space. So, in general, you look at the diagram, we assume this is the, the quantity of matter or region of space. So, the whatever is inside, it is called a system. So, we are going to concentrate only on the system to study the change in the properties. So, the system is within the uh, the uh, boundary. So, we have one line boundary and outside line we have the surrounding. So, we define the boundary and the surrounding. The system may be there are three types closed system, open system or isolated system. What is closed system, what is open system and what is isolated system we will discuss later. And now surrounding, what is surrounding it is outside. Everything external to the system is called as surrounding or environment. Then the boundary, the system is separated from the surroundings by means of boundary. The boundary may be fixed boundary or moving boundary and the system and the surroundings together comprises the universe. So, the system, it is a region of space, region in the space on which we focus our attention for our thermodynamic studies and uh, the surrounding is, everything is outside the system is surrounding and the system and the surrounding, they are uh, separated by the boundary and the system surrounding put together, it is called as universe. So, this is the basic definition. And we said there are three systems, closed system, open system and the isolated system. Uh, first one is closed system. We assume a system, look at the diagram, no mass transfer. We have the boundary, we have the surrounding, there is no mass transfer, energy in and energy out. That means, energy is crossing the boundary and there is no mass transfer that means mass of the system remains constant. So, within the system we have certain quality of substance that remains the same 
and only energy crosses energy is entering into the system or leaving the system that is what the closed system so the mass of the system remains constant and the energy crosses the boundary of the system and open system look at the diagram so we have the system boundary surrounding mass is entering mass is leaving mass in mass out energy in energy out that means both energy and mass that is crossing the boundary of the system most of the engineering devices they are open system you look at your ic engine look at your pressure cooker look at the turbine uh, look at your motorcycle so mass is entering and mass is leaving energy is entering and energy is leaving so this is open system and isolated system it is completely isolated isolated means it is it is not reacting it is not connected with the surrounding so there is no interaction between system and the surrounding it is fixed mass and fixed energy neither energy is crossing the boundary nor uh, mass is crossing the boundary of the system so closed system open system and the isolated system and uh, we said many of the engineering devices or most of the engineering devices they are open system for thermodynamic analysis of the open system such as air compressor so look at this is a air compressor so where do you find the air compressor in all the automobile vulcanizing shop you find the air compressor what is air compressor the air compressor is a device where the motor is connected atmospheric air is drawn into the compressor and it is compressed and it uh, high pressure air is leaving so work is given work is given to the uh, through the motor work is given to the compressor and it is compressed right the because of the compression there is increase in temperature the heat is leaving so if you look at the body of the compressor it is it is hot so heat is leaving now this is the compressor which is a open system so air is entering air is leaving mass is entering mass is leaving energy is entering energy is leaving it is a open system the open system normally it is given by the control volume and control surface so attention is focused on certain volume in space of the surrounding of the compressor is known as control volume so the dotted line is called as the volume is called as control volume and the dotted line is called as control surface so control surface is separating the control volume from the surrounding so matter and energy cross the control surface what is matter mass and energy cross the control surface so control volume and control surface it is the, it is it is used for defining the open system and the boundary we said already we said boundary may be fixed moving imaginary or real so it may be a fixed boundary moving boundary imaginary boundary real boundary so look at the diagram it is a nozzle and you have the boundary so the dotted line is imaginary boundary the body is the real boundary so the steel body is the real boundary and this is the dotted line which is the imaginary boundary and look at here so the piston is reciprocating inside the cylinder so there is mass flow so the moving boundary the boundary is moving and this is the fixed boundary so this is fixed so this this end is fixed and this end is moving so this is fixed boundary or moving boundary so the boundary may be real imaginary fixed or moving that is what the different types of boundaries and look at this diagram we have x axis where the volume is taken y axis where the pressure is taken we have point a point b point 1 and point 2 right so point 1 pressure is p1 we read pressure is p1 volume is v1 point 2 we read pressure is p2 and volume is v2 so the characteristics of the system is defined is given by the properties so properties how we will define the properties the characteristics by which the physical condition of the system is described for example volume pressure and the temperature so the volume pressure and temperature they are the basic thermodynamic properties so for example here we measure the pressure p1 p v1 here p2 v2 so here we calculate pa va and here pb and then vp then we define the state when all the properties of the system have definite value the system is said to exist in a definite state so the this is the state 1 state 2 state a and state b so when the properties take a definite value then it is at a particular state for example atmospheric state 
Atmospheric state means atmospheric pressure, 760 millimeter of mercury. Atmospheric temperature, uh, for example, 38 degrees Celsius. That is atmospheric state. And change of state. So, any operation in which one or more properties of the system changes is called a change of state. So, for example, one, the property here it is one, state one. Here it is change state two. The properties are changing from state one to state two. That is what the change of state. And the succession of states passed through the during change of state is called as path. So, this 1 to 2 is called as path. 1 to 2 is a path, 2 to 1 is a path, A to B is a path, B to A is a path. So, the succession of change of state, it is called as path. And the change of state is caused by a process. So, 1 to 2 is the line, the line is path and the 1 to 2 is the process. 2 to 1 is the process, A to B is the process and the path. And the cycle, look at the diagram. So, the process, this is the state 1. The state is changed to state 2. So, 1 to 2 is a path. Then 2, again, it is reaching the 1. So, 2 to 1 is again another path. So, so 1 to 2 is a process. 2 to 1 is another process. So, by, by executing two different processes, 1 to 2 and 2 to 1, the system returns to the original state. Then, this 1 to 1 is called as a cycle. A thermodynamic cycle is defined as the series of states change such that final state is identical with the initial state. And uh, we, we have two different thermodynamic properties. One is intensive properties, another one is extensive properties. What is intensive properties? Properties which are independent of mass of the system are called as intensive properties. For example, pressure, temperature, velocity, density. So, these are all intensive properties, independent of mass. How to remember? Independent of mass. Extensive properties is opposite, depending on the mass. The properties which are dependent on the mass of the system are called as extensive properties. For example, volume, energy. And we have the phase. So, we know any substance, it can exist in three phases. Solid phase, liquid phase and gaseous phase. A quantity of matter, homogeneous. Throughout the chemical composition and physical structure is called the phase. So, every substance can exist in any one of the three phases. When system consisting of single phase is called as homogeneous system. When the system consisting of more than one phase is called as heterogeneous system. What is homogeneous system? Air is flowing. Water is flowing. So, we, we have in the system, we have only single phase. Right? Air, water or the steam. Now, suppose there are two fluid, two phases are mixed together. For example, water vapor and water. Water vapor and vapor, water. Air and water. So, air and water particle. Water particle is liquid phase, air is the gaseous phase. So, when you have more than one phase, then it is called as heterogeneous system. When you, when you have only one phase or a single phase, it is called as homogeneous system. And you have more than one phase that is called as heterogeneous system. And we, we have a break here and we write down the term whatever you remember from the uh, 10 minutes discussion. You take even you can pause the video and you can write the points what you remember in between. You take few seconds and write down the terms what are all remember from the previous 10 minutes discussion. Okay, so when you are able to write all these things, thermodynamic system, open system, closed system, isolated system, properties, state, process, cycle, intensive properties, extensive properties, homogeneous system, heterogeneous system, then it is good. So, you remember, whatever you remember, you just write down, then we define what is a state, what is an open system, what is a closed system, everything we can, we can recollect. Then you, there is a table, you try to match open system, closed system, isolated system. What is open system? What is closed system? And what is isolated system? Open system, both mass and energy, both mass and energy cross the boundary of the system. Closed system, mass remains constant and only energy crosses the boundary. Isolated system, neither mass or energy cross the boundary of the system. So, that is how you have to remember. Then we talk about 
thermodynamic equilibrium. So, what do you mean by equilibrium? When there is no change in the macroscopic properties. So, we said pressure, volume, temperature, they are the properties. When there is no change in the properties, then the system is exist in a thermodynamic equilibrium. A system is said to exist in a set of thermodynamic equilibrium when there is no change in the any of the macroscopic properties if the system is isolated from the surrounding. And uh, we have three conditions for thermodynamic equilibrium. They, there, should not, there should be mechanical equilibrium, chemical equilibrium and thermal equilibrium. The system should maintain mechanical equilibrium, chemical equilibrium and thermal equilibrium. What do you mean mechanical equilibrium? There is no unbalanced forces. Chemical equilibrium, there is no chemical reaction. And thermal equilibrium, there is no temperature difference. So, when the temperatures are equal within the system, then it is in the thermal equilibrium. When there is no chemical reaction within the system, then it is called as chemical equilibrium. When there is no unbalanced forces in the system, then it is called as mechanical equilibrium. When all the three conditions are satisfied, then it is called as thermodynamic equilibrium. And when the condition, any one of the condition is not satisfied, then it is called as non-equilibrium state. So, any one is not satisfied, then it is called as the non-equilibrium state. And you take few minutes time, few seconds time, you look at the diagram. So, what do you observe? I have a piston cylinder arrangement. So, the piston reciprocates within the cylinder and you have the stops to stop the movement of the piston. And above the piston, you have a weight. And uh, the weight, uh, it is balancing. So, the pressure is there. Gas is inside the cylinder. So, the gas pressure is acting in the upward direction and the weight is giving the downward force. The gas pressure and the weight are equal. That is why the weight, the, the piston is in the same position. So, we take this is the initial position, what we see in the diagram. So, initial position is 1, where the pressure is P1, volume is V1. So, how to measure the volume? So, this is the volume. What is the pressure inside that we can measure the pressure? So, P1 and V1. So, what we do, we suddenly remove the weight. When you remove the weight, there will be imbalance. So, the imbalance, what do you mean by that imbalance? The gas pressure is acting on the bottom of the piston, which pushes the piston to the top. top. So, moving upward and you have a stop here, the piston is stopped. So, that is the final state. So, final, final pressure is P2 and final volume is V2. So, in between, what happens? It is expanded. So, the volume increases, pressure decreases, it is expanded. The expansion process is given by the dotted line. So, initial state P1, V1, T1, the weight is balanced by the upward force except by the gas. When the weight is removed, the piston moves upward. Final state is P2, V2, T2. Intermediate state points are non-equilibrium states which cannot be described by the thermodynamic coordinate. So, this uh, dotted line, we cannot describe the process. Then, look at this diagram. Now, the weight is replaced by small pieces of weights. So, again, the same kind of arrangement. The weight is replaced by small pieces of weights. So, initial state as usual, this is the initial state. Now, we are removing one by one. So, first weight is removed. The piston is moving slightly upward. This is the second point. The second weight is removed. Again, the piston is moving in the upward direction. This is the second point. Third weight is removed. Again, the piston is moving in the upward direction. Third point. Similarly, we remove one by one and we locate the point. So, these points are called as equilibrium points. In between every, every system, the system comes to the equilibrium condition after removing every weight. Then we remove the next weight. So, the equilibrium points are connected to the up to the point 2. Final point is 2. Now, 1 and 2, it is given by the continuous dot, continuous line and in between, we have the equilibrium state and the process now, it is very slow. Earlier, the process very fast. Now, the process is very slow. Every point in between 1 and 2, they are equilibrium state. So, such a process is called as quasi static process. Locus of all equilibrium point passed through the system is called as quasi static process. Quasi static means infinite slowness, infinite slow. Right? So, quasi means almost, static means static, it is not moving. Right? Infinite slowness is the characteristic feature of the quasi static process. 
and the quasi static process is called also called as reversible process so what do you mean by reversible process so we remove one by one and from the initial state to the final state the system is taken now we add the weight one by one the system will follow the same path and return to the original state that is called as reversible pro reversible process we will discuss the reversible process in more detail in the later stage so initially now reversible process when the system follows the path 1 to 2 and remove the uh, add the weight it will come to the initial state following the same path that is the reversible process and once again we have a reflection spot here write one sentence about mechanical equilibrium thermal equilibrium chemical equilibrium and thermodynamic equilibrium so mechanical equilibrium when there is no unbalanced forces thermal equilibrium when it is when there is no temperature difference chemical equilibrium when there is no chemical reaction and thermodynamic equilibrium when all the three conditions three equilibrium conditions are satisfied then it is called as thermodynamic equilibrium a infinitely slow process is a quasi static process say true or false so answer is true and a quasi static process is a reversible process again the answer is true so we stop here so these are the reference books what i used for preparing the slides so you can also refer to it and uh, this is my mail id if you have any queries on the subject you can write the queries to the mail id and if you have any comments on the video or anything you want to add or anything uh, you want new that, you, that also you can comment so that i will improve the next video until then thank you for watching